Holy shit. Damn, dude. <gasps> Check out this view. Oh my god, I have never stayed in central Manhattan before. This is cool. It's the, that's the Empire State Building, right there. Right there. This is a very cool room. This is going to be a lot of fun. Also, this whole intro has been filmed on the XH2S. It's been pretty good, except for one thing that's really bothered me. I can't work out how to fix it. So that's going to be my mission for this week, I guess. All right, first things first, drinks. And then dinner, because we're hungry. I don't even know if I should be vlogging right now. I've got tinnitus. Have you got tinnitus? Why am I doing this after I've had beers? <sighs> I've been invited to New York from Fujifilm. Doesn't mean they've sponsored the video. They've just provided the accommodation and flights. So of course it's massively in my favor to put things out as they happen in terms of product releases and other things. So my intention for these videos is that I'm just gonna make them raw, I'm just gonna make them rough and ready, and I'm just gonna publish them and uh, show you what I'm doing in New York. And uh, it's been really enjoyable. So, yeah, thank you Fujifilm for inviting me. Thank you for the drinks as well. This trip has kind of come out of nowhere. It's been a whirlwind already, and uh, it's because they have their X Summit and Fujikina events. So as you know, they loaned me the X-H2S uh, and a few lenses and things. I've brought that with me. They've also just announced the Fujifilm X-H2. Been testing it a little bit, and you know what? It's the first Fuji camera that I personally feel like I might actually be using a lot for video. I've always had a few quirks and things that I've mentioned on the channel before. Uh, things like the exposure just kind of jumps in the first section, the autofocus hunts a little bit. It was a case of if everything was in manual, it was a beautiful picture and a joy to use, but anything that was auto was a bit of a problem. The X-H2S, however, it's kind of solved a lot of those issues. And so it's the first time I actually feel really confident using it for video. So as you've probably seen across the internet and in the subscription feed, there'll be a number of different posts about the X-H2. I've not really had much time to play around with it just yet. I literally arrived here last night and was handed it. And um, that's kind of the extent of, uh, of my usage for it. The X-H2S, however, I have been using a little bit over the last couple of weeks. So this video is more just to say that I'm here in New York and I've extended my trip because I want to play around with these cameras. I'll be making some vlogs and uh, going out and actually using the cameras for the photography that I want to capture whilst I'm in New York. And uh, that's what I'm most excited about. So the reason that I'm here on this trip is because I've been an X-H1 user from day zero. When that camera came out, I bought it launch day. It was an absolute workhorse for me for about two or three years solid. I always did enjoy the X-H1. That was such a great camera for me. And in fact, in my new print store that's currently live, the photos in that print store, two of which are X-H1, two of which are X100F. And so those are my two cameras that I featured most heavily on this channel. And I'm very excited for an X-H2. I've always loved the bigger grip. I do really enjoy that. There are some different design changes that I've mentioned before with the lack of the dials and things. It doesn't bother me too much. Um, there's definitely a bit of a learning curve having been so used to the X100F and the X-T4, but in essence, it's kind of the same as other cameras when it comes to that type of usability. Uh, visually though, it does lose a bit of its charm, which is a bit of a shame in my eyes. But in terms of functionality and usability, I think this is gonna be a workhorse. So if we go for the X-H2S and we see the body here, Obviously very similar to the original X-H1, although actually a little bit smaller, I believe, and a tiny bit lighter uh, in terms of the width and height. And then the X-H2 in an identical body to the X-H2S, except for the wording of X-H2 uh, rather than X-H2S. And unlike the S model, which has an S on the front of it, the X-H2 is just blank. We've got the same great ports in the nice flappy doors. Note the full-size HDMI, always a winner, and the same batteries as the X-T4. So between the two cameras, I'm a little bit unsure which one I'd personally go for. I am seriously contemplating potentially getting one of these in the future, but I'm a little bit hesitant because on the one hand, the X-H2 has the higher resolution, 
great for photography of, you know, big vantage viewpoints, the types of images I love to take. And with that comes 8K video. I think it's still a couple of years or so until I start to really think about even doing stuff in 8K. But scaling the footage from 8K to 4K, which it can do in the camera, is potentially going to be a good thing. So I'll be keeping an eye on that to check it out and see how it performs. But then the X-H2S is all about speed and that should perform better for things like rolling shutter. I don't necessarily do fast sports photography, but when it comes to fast moving subjects, the types of things you see in street and urban, again, I'll have to wait and see between the two cameras. And then finally, on paper, I believe the X-H2S actually performs a little bit better than the X-H2. It's rated to have an extra stopper dynamic range, but then of course the X-H2 is about 500 pounds cheaper than the X-H2S. So there's a few contradictory things there. And honestly, I am a little bit unsure at this stage. So at least I've got the benefit of being able to test them out and I'll be able to let you know once these videos have been published. So the event is in about two hours or so. Uh, so that gives me a little bit of time to hop out with the camera. Uh, I'm just gonna take the X-H2 and the 56mm 1.2 and I've set up my Cozy Chrome and Superstone Fuji recipes. Um, I'll leave those on the screen and I'm just gonna show some JPEGs and let's just test this out, you know, first impressions of using it. Um, and I'll just throw in some images from, uh, I guess, a two block radius of my hotel um, before we head to the event. It is a bit chaotic, this schedule, um, as they always are. So there's limited time at the moment, um, but coming, coming soon, I will be working on some videos showcasing more in-depth thoughts as I'm using this. I'm all about usability. Tech specs you can, of course, get from other sources. Most of the people here are journalists and uh, they're writing blog posts and articles. I kind of fit in somewhat into that, but mainly I'm making videos about lifestyle use. So if you want some of that technical information and other stuff, um, then I'll point a link to uh, some of those guys because um, they're working hard on those right now. So among the specs that stood out to me, this has the brand new sensor, the 40.2 megapixel, I believe it is. That allows for 8K video, it can do 8K up to 30. But two things that really stood out to me in the video front is we've got ProRes internal, if we want to do that, but also you can do ProRes 8K with ProRes proxy recording. So if your computer struggles to handle you know big resolution files you want to create proxies having those made in the camera oh my god such a workflow saver I'm not saying you need to be publishing in 8k i'm definitely not going to be publishing in 8k um, but every so often it is nice to film that and you can crop in you could even do the digital zoom in the camera and just punch in and just get that 4k detail from an 8k image and the second feature which is also a video one which stood out to me uh, i don't believe it's available yet i think you have to get a uh, an external grip for this and that's wireless connectivity between multiple xh2s or xh2s's and therefore with multiple cameras you can set up a video situation you can synchronize the settings across all of them you can control your recording you can start stop you can record to the device i don't know if you can do a remote record actually that's one thing to check but yeah synchronizing all your cameras across and having a, a remote web app that you can use uh, to control it that's pretty cool so as i said i'm going to be heading out down there i am looking forward to this probably not going to vlog today as such um, but i will get some images and uh, then I'll go out and make some stuff over the next few days. So the main thing really is by letting you know that I've got an X-H2, I can open it up for questions. So let me know if you've got any things that you want me to test and check out. And uh, I'll see if I can address it whilst I'm here in New York. This is, uh, yeah, this is fun times. All right, catch you in a bit. Uh, I'm going to go shoot. Then I've got to go to the event. And then there's some other stuff. And there's... <laughs>